Hello and welcome to a special edition of Chalk Talk. I'm Andrew Todd Smith. It's a delight to welcome Cleveland.com and Plain Dealer Ohio State beat reporter Ari Wasserman. Ari, thank you for taking the time to join us today. It's good to be here. How are you? I'm doing great. Um, so obviously National Signing Day, um, big event in the football world. Fresh off the national title, Ohio State looking to parlay that title into some strong recruiting gains for the team. Urban Meyer, of course, last several years has had a top five class since he got here in 2012. Um, top 10 class forecast for this coming year. And we, of course, we have four early enrollees. Can you just talk about the class generally and these four guys that have enrolled here early at Ohio State? Well, the ironic part about the national championship and everything that they've accomplished on the field is that it actually is not having very much bearing on this year's class because it was almost fully assembled before they got to Dallas. Sure. So um, I think that the long-term effects of having that national, trophy, national championship trophy in the Woody Hayes Center is going to be a, a huge recruiting tool and something that Urban can you know, lean on going forward. But this year, I mean, it's just kind of been a running juggernaut here. And uh, you know, guys come in and they see the facilities and the stadium and you know, the past success. And of course, Urban Meyer's body of work speaks for itself. So you know, in other top 10 classes are going to be automatic. It's just about, you know, competing with teams like Alabama at the top to try to, you know, sign and, and get, you know, a top one or two class. But I think the difference between those two things is kind of trivial. Uh, they've done a very good job. They're happy with the guys that they have. And, uh, yeah, they've done pretty well. Great. Um, okay, so speaking specifically about, we've got defensive end Jay Sean Cornell, uh, Nick Connor, Jamel Dean, Grant Schmidt, um, some good guys already – enrolled early in the program, uh, just like Braquan McMillan was one of mm -hmm. those names that came in early last year. Um, what do you see from those guys in terms of, you know, the contributions they, they, they see, uh, the, the team sees them making, and then we'll transition to some of the, sure. the five stars and four stars forecast for tomorrow. You know, I think the, the most interesting thing is I think that Ohio State in general always wants, if you can, to enroll early and be involved in spring practice because the two biggest growth areas for a player, especially when they're young, is fall camp and spring football. Sure. So, uh, you know, getting a guy like Raekwon in last year gave him a chance because he was ultra talented, five star guy to learn the defense. And obviously, he had a huge impact on this team. And if he wasn't a starter this year, right. so to get some of these guys in and, uh, you know, have a chance to develop, especially on the offensive line, because uh, that's just an impossible place to start as a freshman usually. So, um, you know, the thing about Ohio State, speaking in generalities, is, is that they've recruited so well for so long and, and they won a national championship with the young players they have because of how well they've recruited. It's kind of getting to the point now, even though Urban Meyer says he doesn't like the red shirt guys, where it's almost impossible to come in and start right away. So you have some very talented guys. The four guys you just mentioned are all very highly rated guys. Um, but, you know, getting in is almost a necessity to try to be ready to go in fall camp if they even want to think about seeing the field. Makes sense. Um, so outside linebacker, of course, the role that he played um, in high school, Justin Hilliard, five-star coming mm -hmm. out of St. X in Cincinnati. Um, a little bit of interest in Iowa. Do we see him being a strong written commitment for tomorrow? Like, of course. Can you yeah, lock it yeah. down? Yeah, well, his brother plays there. Yeah. And, um, you know, they had a huge, you know, he went and visited Iowa a few times and he yeah, took an official visit to, you know, spend time with his brother and whatnot. But I think that if he was ever going to end up at Iowa, it probably would have happened. I mean, his father and his brother were at his signing day commit, you know, commit ceremony. I was down there and um, they were all very excited about the future of, that he. Um, has at Ohio State, and the funny thing is, is Jason Cornell, one of the early enrollees, is like his best friend on the planet. So, nice. um, you know, the brother's important, and I, I think that he just wanted to take his own step and, and be, you know, uh, his own name and his, do his own thing. And, and the most interesting thing about Justin Hilliard, more so than anything, is that Urban Meyer is trying to reverse the trend where Ohio State in the last 10 years has had issues locking down top prospects from the Cincinnati area. And uh, to use Kerry Combs and to go down there and really take a top player that as like you know Hilliard and keep him in the state is a very big emphasis for this program and certainly a huge example for the way that Urban Meyers has success and certainly somebody that we all expect to sign no problem on, on Wednesday. Excellent news for Buckeye fans. Um, so referring now to I, I mentioned that outside linebacker position Nick Connor inside mm -hmm. linebacker you know switching from a base 3-4 defense in high school to what Ohio State runs under Luke Fickle and Chris Ash um, do we expect those guys to have an immediate impact? Where do you see them going? Whether it's you know strong side, middle, weak side, what do you what do you see happening at the linebacker position? There's no possible way to answer that because um, <laughs> Ohio State's defense is so complex, and there's so much talent in the linebacker spot 
that it's just where do you learn the defense and where do you excel? I mean, if you look at their best defensive player this year was arguably Darren Lee, and he came in as a quarterback. Yep. So um, it's really hard to gauge which area that they'll find. And I think that Raekwon is going to solidify the spot in place of Curtis Grant on the inside. And, of course, Darren Lee is going to be a two, two more years probably unless he's good enough to leave early, which is a potential. So those guys are probably going to come in and have to you know wait their turn again. <laughs> and uh, uh, where they end up is a very – very trivial thing. I think that Nick Connor is a very specific example of somebody who kind of came out of nowhere. Um, and Ohio State had a very strong haul of linebackers. They did miss on Porter Augustin about an hour uh, ago on Tuesday. I don't. Um, so and he was a five star, but they're bringing in Jerome Baker and Hilliard too. So right. he earned his scholarship offer, and they thought he was very uh, talented, and they liked what they can work with. And being in spring, he might even be able to you know, maybe carve out a niche somewhere on the defense. But as far as where they might end up in a few years, it's really, really difficult to say before they get here. Fair enough. Now, Jerome Baker, mm -hmm. it's a great segue because he and Torrance Gibson technically both listed as athletes because they're mm -hmm. versatile guys. Uh, Baker has experience at running backs. He was recruited by Stan Drayton and Luke Fickle. So, like I said, excellent segue to Torrance Gibson. Quarterbacks. It's what everybody's been talking about. Yeah. Uh, he's taken visits in the last several weeks to Auburn, LSU, and Miami mm -hmm. in that order. How worried should Buckeye fans be in terms of his commitment level to Ohio State right now? I've talked to Torrance Gibson about 1.5 million times, <laughs> and he has not communicated with me in the last few weeks because I think he's making a decision. Interesting. Um, and I don't know if it's a fair thing to assume, but he's usually very easy to communicate with, and now he's not. And I think the thing with Torrance Gibson, right now at this moment, Ohio State expects him to sign. Um, but on the other hand, when he committed to Ohio State, he had a big emphasis because he is an athlete on staying at the quarterback position. Yep. And as anybody who has paid any attention to Ohio State football for five minutes knows that there is a unique situation at quarterback that yep. did not exist when he committed to the program uh, with Cardale and, and JT and maybe Braxton returning. So. Um, I think that what's happening is, is he's taking official visits to southern programs that are closer to his Florida home, and yeah. he's, he's giving some thought to those things because they're selling him as being the guy right away. And I think he's always been open to the potential of redshirting. I don't think he's open to the idea of being behind a redshirt sophomore next year in JT and then a redshirt junior. It could be three more years. You know, Again, I think a quarterback position in Ohio State, you need to come in and you have to be ready to sit, and that's part of the development and the maturation. I mean, I thought that Cardell Jones was going to be gone after this year and never play football again, and now he's a national champion. So I think part of the thing that a quarterback has to do more than anything is be willing to wait his turn, and I think Torrance is willing to do that, but I think there's a certain extent that where he's like, well, I could wait my turn at Ohio State or I could wait at Auburn where they're selling me on being the guy. So... Again, right now, I think that he's going to sign with Ohio State. I still think his heart's here, but I do think that it's not a done deal in his mind. Fair enough, yeah. Um, of course, showing Urban Meyer's Florida ties there. For, he's from the Fort Lauderdale mm -hmm. area. Auburn losing Nick Marshall, so that's mm -hmm. a good point to make that uh, he could be very in high demand. Um, now, in terms of some of these, as you mentioned, Southern classes, do, do you expect any of them at the last minute to kind of poach any of these Ohio State, um, you know, players that are interested in Ohio State or vice versa? Do you, do you see Ohio State kind of sniping any players um, from some of these bigger markets at the last minute? Well, I think that the guys that they're in on, I mean, my colleague Doug Lane Marie wrote a story this morning about how Ohio State has 89 scholarship players. If you include the class for next year, they've got to be at 85. So it's going to be kind of a tight situation for them to try to, they're in on three guys still and none of them are committed elsewhere. So I, I think that, um, when it comes to who they might sign or who might commit as a you know bonus to the 25 that are already committed, it's going to be one of those three guys. And the one thing that Urban Meyer has prevented ever since he's been here for the most part is allowing other programs of equal stature as Ohio State to come in and flip his own, his own commits. He's been very good at flipping others, but he's been also just as good or just as impressive in holding on to the ones that he has. So um, I don't necessarily believe or, or think that uh, Ohio State should fear that any of the guys they've had solidly committed for a long time are going to flip. Um, I think that the class is basically intact at this point, and they're thinking about adding a few guys that will come if they want to, um, but there's still some recruiting to do. So right now, no matter what's going to happen, they're going to have a great class. It's just there might be a surprise or two at the end. Fair enough. And two final questions for you. Sure. They've only got one verbal wideout commit from Alex Stump. Mm -hmm. Do you see that being a concern with the departure of Evan Spencer and Devin Smith? You know, I think that they, they're still in on one more receiver. 
and KJ Hill from North Arkansas who's committed to Arkansas. He's going to be picking between Ohio State and Alabama on National Signing Day. So there's a chance they might have another one. But there's a lot of very young players on this team that you know are versatile enough to play wide receiver. And you know Alex Stump's a good guy, a uh, good player, but he's got done recovering from an ankle foot injury that he had to take a screw out of a few weeks ago. So he might not even be completely ready by the time they need him. But you know guys like Johnny Dixon on the roster and you know. You know, some of the younger players are going to have to step up the wide receiver position. Um, uh, it's interesting. I think they might have liked to take one more uh, just to have that depth. But I think that the room that they have in general uh, with some of their guys, with Corey Smith coming back, his role expanded at the end of the year and whatnot, I think they're, they're not too worried about it at this point. They're probably going to have a huge haul of them next year in 2016. Uh, and final thought for you. So obviously double-digit number of four-star and three-star commits. Um, obviously stacking up underneath Justin Hilliard, the surefire five-star. Talk to me about Terry Beckner, the defensive tackle. He made an official visit to Ohio State on January 23rd, also has shown interest and visited Mizzou, Florida State, and Auburn. Top 50 guy, what are the odds for tomorrow? I wouldn't be too, uh, I wouldn't bank on that too much. I think that he had a good time when he was here. He was on campus for Ohio State's national championship celebration. He was in the shoe, had a good time, but he went to Missouri um, this weekend and he went to a basketball game and I don't know if you saw this yeah. but everybody in the student section was wearing his number on a t-shirt and apparently that really moved him so I, I think right now the two teams that beat are Missouri and Florida State Ohio State certainly is not a team that I'm ever going to count out because Urban Meyer is a magician with this kind of thing um, but Terry Beckner is going to be a would be a major surprise huge pull if they could get him on National Signing Day um, and I think that we kind of saw what Ohio State uh, is feeling in that situation when they got Devon Hamilton from Kentucky, another defensive lineman. I think that they're not, they'll take him because they'll always take a guy that good, but I don't think they're necessarily banking on it either. Certainly. And of course, you know, losing, losing Michael Bennett, um, but always an evolving unit, you know, top, top D line in the, in, in the country this past mm -hmm. year. Um, we get, they get Boza back. So it'll yep. be interesting to see how it all shakes out. Uh, but that's going to do it for us. Um, good luck to you covering all the, Thank you. the craziness tomorrow. We really appreciate you coming on and uh, sharing your, your input with us. But that's, sure. like I said, that's going to do it. Uh, alongside Ari Wasserman of Cleveland.com and The Plain Dealer, I'm Andrew Todd Smith, and we'll see you next time.